All right, everyone, get ready, because today we're diving headfirst into one of Marvel's biggest game changers, Secret War. Huge. Absolutely huge. We're talking about issue hashtag 10, the one where Doctor Doom does something so wild, so unexpected, it still blows minds to this day. It's not just about the shock value, though, is it? Not even close. What makes this issue a classic is how it gets inside the head of power. Like, what does it really mean to want it, to have it, and what does that do to a person? All this playing out while the universe is practically falling apart around them. Okay, so we've got the comic right here, right? The source material. We do. Plus, we've got its Wikipedia entry just to cover all the bases. What we're going to do is break down not just what went down, but the why. Why is this one issue still sending ripples through the Marvel Universe after all these years? You know, it's like someone dropping a pebble in a pond, but that pebble is doom grabbing ultimate power. We're still feeling those ripples. So picture this, a patchwork planet called Battleworld, stitched together by this being of, well, he's basically all powerful, the Beyonder. Yeah, and he's got these heroes and villains plucked right from Earth, thrown into this crazy cosmic arena. And he's basically like, all right, fight it out, see what happens. One thing people forget is how, I don't know, unaware the Beyonder is at this point. He's fascinated by us, by humans, and how we fight, but he doesn't totally get what's at stake. Like a kid playing with fire. Right. Exactly. He doesn't even realize it can burn. And smack dab in the middle of all this is Dr. Doom. Oh, yeah, good old Doom. But coming into this issue... He is not having a good time. Beaten up, bruised, bandaged. The guy's been through it. But here's the thing about Doom. Break his body. You haven't broken his spirit. It's more resilient than, I don't know, whatever they make those X-Men jets out of. Adamantium. Yeah, that stuff. This is classic Dome, you know? He gets knocked down, humbled even, but that core belief that he's meant for greatness, that never wavers. In a weird way, it makes him more dangerous. I see what you mean. There's this vulnerability, but it makes him try even harder. Right. Imagine being Doom in that moment, at your absolute worst, staring up at a being who can reshape reality on a whim. And instead of begging for mercy. You think, how can I steal that power for myself? And that's what Shooter nails in this issue. You see Doom's ego warring with doubt. He really believes he's meant to rule, but even he feels a flicker of uncertainty next to the Beyonder. It's humanizing, in a way. Yeah, it is. This isn't just some mustache-twirling villain wanting power for evil's sake. There's something deeper there, something almost relatable. So we're talking about staring into the Abyss, right? But instead of backing away... Doom's thinking, maybe the Abyss can be my new outfit. And here's where Shooter pulls the rug out. Doom actually pulls it off. He steals the Beyonder's power. You believe that? This isn't just some power boost, some temporary surge. This is Doom going head to head with a cosmic being, and he wins, at least for a little while. Mike, Zeg's artwork at this moment is just, wow. Doom transforms, his injuries are gone, he's practically glowing with power. Zek makes you believe Doom's become a god. It's not just that he's more powerful, it's like he's fundamentally different in that moment. Mm -hmm. And here's where things get really interesting. It's not just a cool plot twist. We have to ask, what does this mean? What does it mean for someone like Doom, even temporarily, to hold this power? Because now we're talking about the nature of power itself, right? Right. Does it always corrupt? Can anyone, even someone as smart as Doom, handle that much power without becoming something monstrous? Because let's be real, Doom has never been shy about wanting to rule. And that's what makes this issue so brilliant. You've got Doom's very human, very flawed ambition next to the Beyonder's power, which is almost like this uncaring force of nature. It makes you think about free will, ambition, what it means to have power over others. And it all comes back to this one event, this one crazy power grab that changes everything. We've got Doom standing there, practically glowing with cosmic power. But this isn't just about him, is it? There are other players on this board, and they're about to find out just how much the game has changed. It's almost like this issue rewrites the rules of the Marvel Universe. Completely changes the scale. Exactly. Because up until now, things have been relatively, you know, contained. The have bound threats. Yeah. yeah. You've got villains trying to take over a city, a country, maybe even the whole planet. Yeah. But Doom taking on the Beyonder, that opens the door to something way bigger and scarier. Like, what's even the limit anymore? Uh, and it's not just about how much power Doom has. It's the kind of power. Reality bending, universe creating kind of stuff. Exactly. And I think that's what makes this issue so important. It forces Marvel, the writers, the readers, everyone to face this idea head on. 
What happens when you give someone like Doom that much power? And it's not a theoretical question anymore. Right. It's like, okay, he's got it. Now what? It's a question that echoes through the comics, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. You see it in later stories. The Infinity Gauntlet, where Thanos gets his hands on those stones. Yeah. Or Annihilation, that massive cosmic war. Those events owe a lot to what Shooter and Zack did here. It's like they broke the power ceiling. Exactly. And the Marvel Universe had to expand to contain it. So Doom's ambition, that drive to be the top dog, it forces everyone to up their game. You said it. It's a chain reaction. The heroes see what Doom's capable of, and it's like a wake-up call. They have to adapt or get left behind. Because punching your way out of every problem just isn't going to cut it anymore. Right. They have to be smarter, more creative. You see it with guys like Mr. Fantastic, Professor X, even Captain America. They start thinking bigger. It's not just reacting to whatever threat pops up. They're thinking, what's next? What's coming? that we're not ready for. They're playing cosmic chess now. And the stakes are through the roof. That evolution, it's not just about individual heroes either. Think about teams. The Avengers, the Fantastic Four, they have to become tighter, more cohesive, because the threats are that much bigger. So Doom makes one power play, and suddenly the entire Marvel Universe has to reevaluate how it does things. It's a completely different playing field. Yes. I'll... And that's why this issue is so much more than just a good story. It's a turning point a catalyst. It redefines what's possible in the Marvel Universe. For the stories they can tell, for how these heroes see themselves, everything. But even with all that, it's wild how Secret Wars hashtag 10 still hits so hard. And we're not just talking about comic book fans. Even the Wikipedia entry mentions how many different takes there have been on this story. Sequels, alternate versions, even Deadpool got in on the action. What is it about this story, about Doom's big moment, that keeps people coming back? That's the million dollar question, right? And I think it's a few things. On a basic level, it's just exciting. A bad guy steals the power of a god. Talk about high stakes. Right. And it's the ultimate underdog story. Except the underdog is a power-hungry dictator in a metal mask. Who tries to conquer the world on a regular basis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there's still a part of you, even though you know Doom's bad news, can't help but root for him a little. He's just so driven, so relentless. There's that Shakespearean tragedy to him. Totally. But more than that, I think Secret Wars hashtag 10, especially Doom's power grab, it's open to interpretation. All those sequels, those what-if stories, they're all looking at the same event from different angles. Like looking at a diamond, all the different facets. Exactly. You've got Secret Wars 2, where the Beyonder actually comes to Earth. Mm. Then there's all those what-if stories. What if Doom kept the Beyonder's power? What if a hero got it instead? And you can't forget Deadpool's Secret, Secret Wars. Oh, man, that one's hilarious. Yeah. But that's the beauty of it, right? you got all these different creators coming from different places, and they're all tapping into the same core ideas. Power, ambition what it means to be a hero. And they all find something new in it. It shows how strong that core story is. It can hold up to all these different interpretations. And each one adds a new layer to the original. Exactly. It all comes back to that image. Dr. Doom, filled with cosmic energy, holding the power of a god. But even with all that, we can't forget about the other side of this story. Right, because the heroes aren't just going to sit back and watch the Doom show. They've been through the ringer on Battleworld, and now they've got to deal with a Doom who can reshape reality on a whim. So we've talked about how Doctor Doom grabbing the Beyonder's power, it's like this earthquake shaking the entire Marvel Universe. But what about the heroes who are still standing after that blast? They're already worn down from Battleworld, and now they've got to face a Doom who can practically think reality into pretzels. How do they even wrap their heads around that? You know, it really shows you what they're made of. Because their first instinct isn't to give up. Imagine seeing your worst enemy decked out with the power of a god, and instead of just collapsing, you find the will to fight back. That's impressive. Especially after everything they've been through, right? They're exhausted, beat up, probably questioning if they can even lift their weapons, let alone take on a being like that. Exactly. But instead of giving in to that fear, that hopelessness, they do what heroes do. They find that extra gear, they dig deep, and they keep fighting, even when the odds are completely stacked against them. I mean, it makes sense. These are characters who stare down the impossible on a pretty regular basis. It's kind of their thing. Yeah, but it's one thing to fight a guy with a death ray. It's another thing entirely to fight someone who can blink a universe out of existence. How do you even plan for that? Talk about a strategy meeting. And that's where their heroism really shines through. They don't stoop to Doom's level. They realize that fighting power with power, that's just going to make the monsters too. So what do they do? They use their strengths. 
their intelligence, their compassion, their ability to work together, all the things Doom seems to have forgotten along the way. The classic hero game plan. Brains over brawn, unity over ego. But it's one thing to know that, and another thing entirely to pull it off against a Doom with a cosmic power boost. You're telling me. But think about how they eventually win. It's not about hitting harder. It's about understanding Doom, knowing what makes him tick. And they use his biggest weakness against him, his own ego. It's kind of a pattern with Doom, isn't it? That pride, that need to be in control, it blinds him to his own weaknesses. All he can see is how smart he thinks he is, how much better he thinks he is than everyone else. He misses the bigger picture. And the heroes, they use that against him. Yeah, which is a good lesson for all of us, right? Yeah. Even the most powerful people, they've got weaknesses. And true strength, it's about recognizing those weaknesses and using your smarts, your understanding, not just brute force, to overcome them. So the heroes outmatched, outgunned, they outsmart a doom who's basically a god. What a powerful message. So not always about being the strongest. Sometimes it's about being the smartest, about sticking to your ideals, even when things are at their darkest. It's a good reminder that you don't have to become a monster to beat a monster. You can overcome challenges, even impossible ones, without compromising who you are. And maybe, yeah. just maybe, you inspire some people along the way. And that brings us back to Secret Wars, hashtag 10, and why it still matters. It's more than just a superhero story. It's about these big ideas, power, what it does to people, and how even a little bit of hope can be the strongest force of all. We've traveled to this weird, patched-together planet, seen Doctor Doom at his most powerful, and watched as the Marvel Universe tries to figure out what to do about it. We've dug into what ambition can do to a person and explored the nature of power itself. How it can be used, how it can be abused, and how sometimes the best way to fight it is to understand it. But the biggest takeaway from Secret Wars Hashtag 10 and from our deep dive today, it's a question, really. And it's one we can all ask ourselves, no matter who we are. What would you do if you suddenly had the power to reshape reality? What choices would you make? Would that power change you? Would you use it for good? Or would it turn you into something different? It's something to think about, isn't it? Because that's the power of a great story. It stays with you. It makes you ask those big questions about yourself, about the world. And hopefully, it inspires you to be a little more heroic in your own life, even if you're not wearing a cape and cowl. That's a wrap on another Deep Dive. Thanks for exploring with us. Until next time, keep those questions coming and keep searching for those deeper meanings. You never know what you might find.